Welcome back to 1834. McDonald is winning two games to one in this fifth match, and it's the first to win six games. Today's guest commentator is the master of Shatranj, an ancient chess variant, Al Sully. The board made to move. Let's begin. E4, E5, and Al Sully says these are both illegal moves, for pawns can only move one square at a time. Knight to F3, Knight to C6, Bishop to C4, Bishop to C5, again super confusing for Al Sully because this is not how elephants move. And the Bordenay goes for the Evans Gambit, and of course everybody knows a gentleman must accept a Gambit, and McDonnell accepts. We have C3 chasing the Bishop back, it goes to A5, and now Le Bordenay castles, and Al Sully just gives up he's gone he's gone all the way back to the to, to the night <laughs> to the ninth century but don't worry though trusty psychic baldrick is always ready to step in mcdonald continues with d6 and le Bordenay hits d4 in the center leading to a pawn exchange and we've seen these moves a few times before when they've played this opening and they continue in a similar vein the bishop comes back to b6 d5 striking the knight so the knight comes out to a5 chasing the bishop the bishop comes back to d3 and mcdonald calmly develops his knight now le Bordenay is perhaps worried about the bishop coming into here or even the knight so he plays h3 to stop them and similarly mcdonald is worried about this bishop coming in uh, to uh, pin his knight so he plays h6 to relieve himself of this problem le Bordenay continues to calmly develop and mcdonald finally castles and though some of the moves were played in a slightly different order we've reached the same position as in match five game number three in that game, Le Bordenay played king to h2, and then shortly after that, McDonald pushed g5, severely weakening his king side. He ended up getting crushed in only 28 moves after the queen got onto the diagonals here and uh, a rook lift. This time, Le Bordenay plays king to h1. Now, perhaps c6 would be good, but instead, McDonald plays his knight back to h7. Perhaps this time, he's planning to push his f pawn. Le Bordenay plays his queen out to c2, perhaps lining up upon the knight here, and yes, McDonald now pushes f5, Baldrick approves. He wants Le Bordenay to capture the pawn here, because if he does, and he does, McDonald now has a passed pawn, he plays c5, and Baldrick suggests capturing en passant here, but even if that does happen, this central pawn will be passed. So good job, McDonald, getting a passed pawn, but uh, will it weaken his king side too much? Let's see. Le Bordenay leaves the en passant alone and plays g4 instead, and McDonald continues with a6. We have bishop to f4, developing his dark square bishop and attacking the pawn, although the queen is defending it. McDonald brings his bishop back to c7. He's uh, getting uh, out of the way of the b pawn and also adding a defender to the central pawn. Le Bordenay anticipates the advance of the b pawn by playing a4 to block it, so McDonald advances his c pawn to attack the bishop. Now, Le Bordenay could play it back to e2, but instead he plays it forward to e4, where it is kind of blocked in by his own pawns. McDonald continues by jumping onto the b3 outpost protected by this pawn, although there's nothing protecting the pawn itself. It's also attacking Le Bordenay's rook, so rook gets it out of the way, over to the e1 square, where it's actually in a much stronger position on the open file. Now here, Baldrick suggests a good move. Well done, Baldrick. Bishop to a5 to attack the knight and pin it against the rook. That's very strong, very active play, but McDonald decides for something much less active. He brings his knight back to c5. Le Bordenay brings his knight into d4, and McDonald simply captures the central light square bishop. Le Bordenay recaptures with the rook, but now the black queen is coming into h4, where it's threatening the undefended pawn, which would come with check and all sorts of nasty business. Le Bordenay just defends with the king, but now the knight is coming in too, and it's a double attack on the pawn. Le Bordenay doesn't want any of that, so he simply captures the knight, and the queen captures back. But now he's pushing f4 and threatening the queen, so the queen comes back to h4 again. But Le Bordenay ignores it for now and puts his knight on e6, a very nice outpost with these two pawns here helping it out and the rook behind it to back it up too. Baldrick suggests just capturing with the light squared bishop, but if you were to do that, one of these pawns is going to recapture and become a very strong pass pawn. However, McDonald does indeed capture the knight and this d pawn recaptures and you can see now just how strong Le Bordenay's position is with this nice central pass pawn backed up by the rest of them down the wing here. McDonald tries pushing h5 and Le Bordenay plays qe2, the Queen Elizabeth move, adding some extra backup to the pawn, but the pawn captures. 
This pawn captures back, and MacDonald tries pushing b5. But Labordne once more ignores it. He brings his remaining knight up to d5, where it's threatening the bishop, so MacDonald tries to defend it. But Labordne simply pushes his pawn to e7. It's now defended by the knight, the rook, and the queen, and looking even more dangerous. So MacDonald tries to stop it with the king. He's thinking that if the pawn queens, then rook captures the queen, rook captures the rook, rook captures the rook, the queen captures the rook, and then the king captures the queen, so everything is fine and he's safe. But what he failed to spot was in this position, from out of nowhere, Labordinate plays rook to h1, and the queen is completely lost. This file is completely covered. The queen can't come here because it'll be captured by the king, and it can't come to either of these squares because of the knight and the pawn here. So, in this position, MacDonald's queen is lost. There's nothing he can do about it, so he promptly resigned the game. Labordne has leveled the match up at two games each, and I'm sure he stayed up all night drinking and smoking and gambling with all of his friends. Join me again next time to see what happens next. See you then.